I guess it's true that what you never have, you never miss. It's also true that you never miss something until you have to do without it. A which piece of pretty deep thinking is the result of my secretary, Julie, taking her annual vacation and leaving me to spend several agonizing weeks alone in my office appreciating how good I'd had it when she was there to keep the joint in working order. Well, I wouldn't have minded so much if the holiday she was bent on taking hadn't been such a kooky one. Oh, she'd read something in the paper about the ninth centenary of the Battle of Hastings coming up in 1966. And this got her all agog about the scene of the crime. Uh, battle. So what does she do but hightail it to some crummy little holiday camp near Hastings in Sussex, there to brood over why it was that King Harold had to go and get an arrow in the eye instead of beating the daylights out of the Duke William of Normandy. But as things turned out, Julie found quite a lot more to brood about than she was looking for. Mr. Carey? Mr. Carey, are you there? It's funny. Mr. Carey? Place is in darkness. Should be a switch somewhere. Ah. Now, what a... <gasps> Mr. Carey? Are you... Mr. Carey? Gus, what's going on there? Gus, are you all right? What are you... Miss Summers, what are you doing in my husband's office at this time of day? <gasps> Gus. What's happened? Gus, are you... I... I think he's dead, Mrs. Carey. What? Oh, no. That gun, it's one of his. I know, he was showing it to me. You... You shot him. No, I've only just come in. I was going to say Mr. Kelly was showing me that pistol the other day. You murderess. You killed my husband. Oh, don't be ridiculous. I got here just before you came in. You weren't content to steal him from me. You had to kill him. What? Mrs. Kelly, you're hysterical. Hysterical? We'll see about that. We'll see what the police have to say about that. Murderess. <laughs> In my book, anybody nutty enough to go prowling about old battlefields deserves trouble. Though not the kind of trouble that Julia dug up for herself. Or maybe just a broken leg or something. Not a murder charge. The morning following Julie's visit to Gus Kerry's office, I was in the middle of my usual frustrating routine of trying to find where I'd put everything the day before when there was a knock at the door. Butterworth... Burston, Buckley, oh, not even the bees are in order now. Where the heck? Bywater, Zav Xavier? That's an X. How did that get in here? Sure, I... uh, Well, no, I'll be with you in a minute. Please take a seat. X is in I the I will bees. not take a what? seat. I haven't the time, nor have you. What? Inspector Caswell. That's right, and you needn't say, what are you doing here? You always hit the roof when I do that. Okay, I won't ask you. Just tell me. I'll tell you on the way. Come on, lock up your office and come with me. But wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you arresting me or something? No, I'm taking you down to Hastings. What? Oh, you must have lost a couple of marbles on the way here, Inspector. Hastings is the last place on earth I want to go right now. That's where Julie... Yes, went. I know. Well, hey, it's not Julie, is it? Yes, it's Julie. Well, what's happened to her? An accident? Is she okay? She, she's not hurt or anything, is no, she? No, she's not hurt. She's just been charged with murder, that's all. What? What? My car's waiting outside. Let's get moving. The local police asked Scotland Yard for assistance. I heard about it and asked for the assignment. Mm-hmm. Well, when I heard Miss Summers was involved, I thought I'd like to help if I can. Inspector, the next time I try to knock you, you just hit me with something, will you? No, I'll try to remember. Look, if all this happened last night, I can't figure why Julie didn't call me right away. What? Oh, oh yeah, wait a bit. I was out most of last night. So I heard. A nice state of affairs. Your secretary desperately needs your help, and you're out painting the town red with some floozy. It happens that I was working and not with some floozy either. Anyway, let's not make with the gags, Inspector. This is serious. Not as serious as it looks, I hope. Well, it's serious enough for you to go rushing out of town to look into the case. Oh, for Miss Summers' sake, I thought I might uh, just as well clean the thing up as quickly as possible. You know, I, I can't believe she's really deeply involved. Well, neither can I. But the local police must have some reason for holding him. Yes, that's what's got me puzzled. Of course, we don't have the details yet. Yeah, just that this Augustus Carey was found shot dead in the office of the holiday camp and 
Julie was there standing over him when Kerry's wife walked in. That's about it. What about the weapon and so on? An automatic pistol, some foreign make. It was there on the floor beside the body. You have fingerprints? I don't know yet. But if Miss Summers' prints aren't on the gun, then we'll have gone a long way towards getting her released. Yeah, maybe. Only this sounds like one of those circumstantial evidence cases in which the only way to prove one person's innocence is to find the real killer. Oh, we might do that too. Oh, Inspector, I wish I could feel so jolly about it. Look, what about suicide? Now, they say no. He was shot in the back. I would say they're right about ruling out suicide. Oh, yeah. Of all the crazy, stupid setups to get into, what was Julie doing in this guy's office late at night anyway? Perhaps you could ask her. It's the kind of question I'd rather not try to answer. Hmm. You know something? The more I think about this case, the worse I feel. Something tells me this is going to be a Lulu. It's so good to see you. Well, you really didn't have to get into this kind of trouble just to find that out, honey. Oh, Pete, I've nearly been out of my mind with worry. I couldn't have dreamt I'd ever find myself in such strife. Take it easy now, take it easy. Everything's going to be okay. That's why we're here. We? Oh, uh, Inspector Caswell. He brought me down here. Inspector Caswell? He's on this case? Oh, that's lucky. Well, it's not exactly luck. He asked for the case. Well, I think he's secretly in love with you. You mean he came just because it was me? Ah, oh, he's a pet. You should feel sorry for all the mean things you've said about him. Well, right now, I'm busy worrying about all the mean things the police are saying about my secretary. Julie, what were you doing in the holiday camp office at that time of night? Tell me it was around ten o'clock. Yes, that's right. But I only went because Gus, uh, Mr. Carey, sent word he wanted to see me. What about? Oh, oh I, uh, I suppose he... Wanted to apologize. Apologize? What for? He'd been trying to... Oh, you know. Do I? Oh, for heaven's sake, Pete. He'd been making advances to me. In the end, I had to be rude to him to get rid of him. It was very embarrassing. Oh. Well, did his wife know about this? I suppose she did. One of the other guests told me Gus Kerry was always chasing after the girls in the camp. Mrs. Kerry knew it, but just ignored it. Mm Mm-hmm. Julie, I notice you call him by his first name. Oh, there's nothing in that, Pete. Everybody did. Well, at first he seemed a nice sort of chap, I thought. I I thought he was just being... Well, making everybody feel at home. After all, it was his holiday camp. Julie, your education has been sadly neglected. But we'll leave that to another time. Uh, You said you had a message to go and see this jerk, Kerry, last night. Didn't you see anything suspicious in his wanting to see you at that time? Oh. Mm, Yet if you knew that I sent word to some doll to come and see me at my office at ten o'clock at night, you'd be scratching my eyes out. That's different. I don't know whether to feel insulted or not. Who gave you this message to see Kerry? Wally. Wally Bates. He's a kind of handyman. He works for the carriage. Wally Bates. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, honey, you just take it easy now and, and don't worry. I'll go and check with the good inspector and see what he's come up with so far. Inspector, how are we going? Try, I wish you hadn't asked, then. What? We've just checked the fingerprints on the murder weapon. And? Well, carriers are there, of course. It's uh, Miss Summers. Oh, no. Well, well, look, maybe she picked up the gun when she found the body. It'd be the No, 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 good, I'm afraid. She's already denied doing that. Well, okay, maybe she denied touching the gun because she was afraid... Oh, come off it, Troy. Miss Summers has had too much experience with crime detection to lose her head like that. We asked her for the truth, and it's reasonable to assume she told the truth, or as much of it as she dared. What are you getting at? I'm sure Miss Summers realizes that one of the most dangerous things to do if you're accused of a crime is to start telling lies. Well, that way you end up making the police suspicious, even if they weren't in the first place. Well, if you're prepared to assume she's telling the truth... Troy, if she killed Kerry... If she killed... For crying out loud... Look, will you let me finish? Now, if she killed him, she'd have enough sense to stick to the truth as far as she could. But naturally, she'd have to leave out the most essential part, a confession to the crime. But if telling the truth only makes it look as though she did it, surely she would start lying. 
The fact that she admitted she was there... Well, she could hardly get out of that. Mrs. Kerry found her there. She came in after hearing a gunshot, so she said. What are you trying to do? Convince me that Julie's guilty? Because I could tell you, Inspector... Will she... you simmer down and listen to me, Troy? <sighs> Okay, okay, I'm... Uh, do, do you imagine I asked to be given this case just so I could prove Miss Summers did kill this man? No, no, of course I'm not. as anxious as you are to prove her innocence. We're not going to be able to do that by hysterical screaming about what a good girl she is. I'm sorry, Inspector. I guess I asked for that. It's just that... Yes, I know, I know, I know. I like Miss Summers, too. We have to deal with the facts as we find them. Now, Miss Summers' fingerprints are on the murder weapon. She can't explain how they got there... Except that Kerry was showing her his firearm collection some days before. Hey, well, that's something. Yes, it might be. But for the fact that nobody can corroborate that. Everybody says it's quite unlikely. Kerry rarely took the pistols out of their glass case. He didn't like people handling the guns. Oh, that's not so good. Uh, but look, Kerry was making a play for Julie. Uh, maybe the guns were part of his line. Well, the way Mrs. Kerry has it, Julie was making a play for her husband. What? Well, you don't believe that, do you? It isn't a question of what I believe, Troy. It's a question of the evidence, the things that could be brought up in court. Yeah. Wait a minute, here's something. That so-called murder weapon, how do we know it really was the gun that killed Kerry? Well, we, we don't know yet. I've sent it to London for ballistics to check. Shouldn't be long before we get an answer to that one. <laughs> Waiting for the ballistics report from London was not exactly the happiest time of my life. But at least I had the time to give myself a good talking to and do a little straight thinking about this case. One of the problems was that I was too close to it, too close to Julie, who right then was standing in considerable danger of her life. It's easy enough to be cool, calm and collected when it's just some paying client you're working for. But when it's someone who really matters to you, that is not very funny. But I needed to detach myself a little. Talking to Inspector Caswell, I'd been just a little like a cub detective, jumping the gun every time he opened his mouth. So when I got around talking to Julie again, I'd managed to cool off somewhat. Nothing new yet, Pete. No, honey, there's nothing yet. What if the ballistics report shows that the bullet that killed Kerry came from the gun with my fingerprints on it? Then it'll look very bad for you. Well, how can you just stand there and say that? That's just the way it's got to be, Julie. You, you can't think clearly when your emotions are involved. You mean your emotions are not involved as far as I'm concerned? You don't care at all about me? I do care, and you know it. But I've got to put it aside. I've got to treat this like any other case. Pete... I know you're innocent, Julie, and so does the inspector. What we've got to do is prove it. How? I don't know. But somehow... Here's that dreadful Mrs. Kerry. She's convinced everyone that her husband and I were having an affair. Well, apparently Kerry was something of a ladies' man. She must have had a pretty rotten time of it one way and another. Rotten time? Don't you believe it? And that Wally Bates hanging around her the way he was. Bates? And Mrs. Kerry? Well, nobody said anything about that. The inspector questioned everyone about personal relationships, and he hasn't come up with anything about Bates. Well, you wouldn't expect him to broadcast it all over the camp, would you? Look, what makes you think there was anything between Mrs. Carey and Bates? I know there was, Pete. How do you know? Oh, look, who cares about that? I'm the one who's likely to be charged with murder, not them. Julie, you silly little idiot. Tell me how you know about Bates and Mrs. Carey. Uh, or are you only guessing? Of course I'm not guessing. One night when Carey was up in London, I went to the office to see if I could get some extra blankets. I was feeling the cold Never mind and... the cold. What happened? Nothing happened. I just saw Wally and Mrs. Bates in the office together, that's all. Yeah, what sort of together? Oh, they were kissing. Mm-hmm. And presumably they broke it up when you came into the office. I didn't go in. I thought it was better not to under the circumstances. Then they didn't see you. They don't know that you saw them together. Well, I don't know. I never thought about it. It wasn't my business. No, I, I don't suppose they do know I saw them. Wow. Wow what? Pete, you don't think... Oh, I never thought of that. Perhaps Mrs. Carey wanted to get rid of her husband. And... Or maybe Bates wanted to get rid of him for her. Julie, why didn't you tell me all this before? I don't know, I just didn't think. Oh, you can say that again. Now just sit tight, Julie. I want to find the inspector. Oh, there 
you are. What in the name of all that's wonderful are you doing sitting out here gazing at the sea? Thinking, Troy, just thinking. Oh, well, stop thinking for a minute and listen. I think I've got out of something. I hope it's better than the ballistics report. Huh? I received the report a half hour ago. Well? Not good, Troy. That was the murder weapon, all right. Oh, no. Yes. Now you know why I'm just sitting and thinking. Oh, brother. Exactly. Oh, what was it you thought you'd found? Hmm? Oh, uh, about Wally Bates and Mrs. Kerry. Yeah, what about them? They were lovers, it seems. Julie saw them together. Did she, by George? Troy, is this the truth? Of course it is. You know she wouldn't make it up. She didn't mention it before because she couldn't see what it had to do with anything. It could have everything to do with everything. I can't think why Miss Summers didn't see that. Oh, well, she was probably too much concerned with her own immediate problem, I guess. It's yeah. easy to be smart about other people's problems, you know. Yes, well, it might have proved even more interesting if it hadn't been for that dashed ballistics report. Now, how did a pistol with only the fingerprints of Miss Summers and the dead man on it kill him unless one of them fired the fatal bullet? That's the stumper. Yeah... Say, I meant to ask you about that pistol. It looked a funny kind of rod to me. Yes, it is. A Belsinger 7mm. Very few of them about nowadays. And Belsinger went out of business back in the 20s. A Belsinger? German? Yeah, that's right. He used to specialize in making guns to order. Anybody who wanted some odd kind of gun in any unusual caliber could get Belsinger to make it. And this Kerry, he had a collection of firearms. With that glass case in his office. That's right. The Belsinger pistol was in the collection. Mm. He kept ammunition for the guns? No, some of them, apparently. Oh, he had the necessary licenses, of course. Uh, well, Inspector, what do we do now? I don't know. Which is why you find me loafing about here trying to think things out. Things look bad for Julie, don't they? I'm glad you said that first. But we both know she's innocent. That's not much help, though, is it? Well, it's a lot of help, because if she's innocent, then somebody else is guilty. All we have to do is find that somebody. Uh, I have an idea. Yeah? It's not much of a one, but it'll keep us from running to seed. You get working on this bates Mrs. Kerry angle. See what you can get them to admit to. Well, they won't admit to murder, not in a hurry. Never mind. Get them jumpy. Make them imagine you know more than you do. You know the routine. Hey, well, what do you then do? I'm going to London. To look up an old fuddy daddy acquaintance of mine. Well, well. It's a long time since I saw you, Peter. Have you caught any good murderers lately, eh? <laughs> Not lately, Mr. Catchpole, but uh, look, I'm on the trail of one right now. Ah, wonderful. A nice, gory case, eh? Oh, that's rather sanguinary from some points of view, yeah. Well, what can I do to help? You do want me to help, don't you? Very much. Mr. Catchpole, with your interest in the collecting of weapons from all over the world, you must know just about everybody in that racket. Yeah, just about, just about. Nearly 60 years I've been at it, you know, and everything I've learned is noted down in my books. Ah, they'll be invaluable to collectors after I'm gone. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure they will. Uh, do you know a collector named Augustus Kerry? Augustus Kerry? I can't recall the name offhand, you know. Ah, but then my memory's not what it was once. Let's look him up, eh? Ah, here we are. K, 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 A, K, E. Yeah. Kerry, here we are. James Kerry, an American. Uh, not James. Augustus. Oh, oh, Augustus. Oh, that'll be on the previous page. Yes, eh? Hey, Arthur. Augustus Kerry. Uh, lives in Sussex. Is that the one? That's the one. No, uh, no. Not really top class, you know. Not a real connoisseur. But a collector, just the same. There's one or two interesting pieces. Uh, does your book show him as owning a Belsinger 7mm automatic pistol? Belsinger? Ah, you know about the Belsingers, eh? Very interesting, very interesting. Uh, Kerry did own one? Eh? Oh, oh, Kerry. Uh, yes, that's right. <sighs> I was afraid of that. I had hoped for a minute that it might have belonged to someone else. A matched pair. Wonderful. What was that? A matched pair. Kerry has not one but two Belsingers. Lucky fellow. 
interchangeable barrels and all. Lovely workmanship. Two pistols with interchangeable barrels? What? That doesn't make sense. Of course it makes sense. An eight-inch barrel for target practice and a three-inch barrel for ordinary use. And the butts are of different weights. One takes five rounds of ammunition and the other takes ten. Yeah, and the barrels can be taken off and changed from one butt to the other, just like that? Yes, that's right. Very handy for the man who's fussy. Some marksmen are very particular about the weight of the pistol and use different weights for different occasions, you know. Mr. Catchpole, you're a whiz. Am I? How nice. Well, now, let's hear all about this grisly murder case of yours. Come along. All the details I want... Not now, I'm afraid. I'll have to wait. Right now, I have to make a very urgent phone call. That joy? Two pistols? That's right, Inspector. You get the picture. The murderer knows Julie's fingerprints are on one pistol, the one Kerry showed her. He shoots Kerry with the other gun and switches the barrels over. Says the fatal bullet came from the barrel of the gun we fired, but the butt was attached to the barrel after the murder. That's it. But we haven't found any other gun. Mrs. Kerry has never mentioned her husband owning another gun. No, but has she mentioned anything else about her having an affair with Bates? No, I'm working on that. I think I have Bates and Mrs. Kerry a little scared, as a matter of fact. Then I'd suggest a very quick and thorough search of Kerry's place and Bates' quarters, too. If they get too scared, they'll get rid of that other pistol. Yes, they haven't done so already. Yeah, well, let's just keep our fingers crossed, Inspector. All we need now is a little luck. Well, wonderful dinner for a wonderful occasion, if I may say so. You may, Inspector. You've earned the right to say anything you like. Oh, it's nice to be appreciated, Miss Summers. <laughs> But don't underestimate your boss here. We never would have got you out of that awkward spot without him, you know. Oh, thank you, Inspector. Now I know you care. Oh, I don't have to praise Pete. He knows how I feel about him. <laughs> yeah, that's what worries me. <laughs> <laughs> I can still hardly believe it's all over. You know, I'm still wondering why that fool Bates didn't get rid of that other pistol instead of leaving it in his room. Probably thought he might have a use for it one day when he got tired of Mrs. Kerry. I had no idea there were two pistols. I saw only the one. Yeah, well, apparently Kerry had the second one put away as a kind of uh, kind of office gun, you know. Mrs. Uh, Kerry and Bates knew that. Nobody else did. And they saved that knowledge up until up popped some convenient female patsy they could frame with a murder. As soon as they noticed Kerry was making a big play for you, honey, they arranged to bump him off and send that phony message for you to come and see him soon after. Yeah, it's a most unpleasant couple. Oh, they soon started to fall apart and confess after we'd found that other gun. Well, it's good to be a free woman again, thanks to you two men. Oh, yes. Um, that reminds me, Miss Summers. A minute ago, you said I'd earned the right to say anything I like. That's right. Oh, hold it now, Inspector. You're a married man. I'm sure the Inspector wouldn't say anything out of place, Pete. Complimentary, perhaps, but not out of place. Go ahead, Inspector. Well, no, I... And you just walk softly, Peter Troy. Peter Troy. 